What is up fellow developers, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back, it's been a long time but today we're going to be looking into Dino. Dino is going is the supposed replacement for Node.js, um, it's a secure runtime like Node.js, or well, a runtime like JS, not a secure one. Oh. Dino is the secure one, no it's not. <laughs> um, so it's a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript, meaning you can use either JavaScript or TypeScript. TypeScript is baked into um, Dino, so you can use it out of the box or you can use JavaScript, it's up to you. In this tutorial, we're gonna be using a bit of both. I'm gonna show you how to use both. It's literally as simple as changing the extension and maybe taking out a couple of the TypeScript stuff in there. Um, so that's super simple. Um, so what is Dino? Dino, again, it's a it's a runtime like Node.js. Um, it's built on the V8, Chrome, uh, Chromium's V8 engine. Um, it's built in Rust. Um, all this information you can read from here. But yeah, so it's secured by default. Obviously, Node.js was not secured by default. Um, it's one executable file. It has built-in utilities, which is pretty cool. I've used a couple of those and we will be in this tutorial. And yeah, so it works pretty well. So let's get started with installing it. So there's two ways to install it. Well, there's more than two, but these are two ways. The main ways they say here, you can find them all using this link. But the way I'm gonna do it is brew. I've already installed it. So I'm gonna head over to here, press brew, install Dino. And it's just gonna tell me I've already got installed. For you, it will in, it will update brew and it'll do all the following stuff and it will install Dino. So now I've got Dino, we can actually test it by running this welcome TS here. If we just click enter, you can see it checks everything here. It's like, welcome to Dino. Pretty cool. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Um, so let's open up VS Code. Now, one thing you should probably get is a Dino extension. I use this one here. It just adds Dino support for VS Code, so you get highlighting and stuff like that. Um, so back in our Dino or in our main area, we can start by creating our first Dino file. In this case, we're gonna say app.js and you can use TS as well. I'm just gonna quickly show it with both. So I'm just gonna say console.log, hello world, hit save. And then I'm gonna open up my integrated terminal. I'm gonna stop that and I'm going to run. So I'm gonna say Dino run and then I'm not going to use, well, let me just show. So if I just run app, you see we get hello world in the terminal. Perfect. But that's not all it does. So obviously, let's head over here and here we go. We get the starter kit from Dino. So the start, <laughs> starter kit from Dino. Here we go. So what it does here, so we're importing surf from this. As you can see here, I actually already have this. When you first run this or when you first add this, you may have a red line under it, don't worry. As soon as you run it, it will download the files necessary and store them in the, ca uh, the cache and Dino's dependencies. Um, so it's not like node modules, it doesn't install them here, it just installs them in a, ca a cache file um, and it can just pull them from anywhere, which is nice. Um, so we've got this surf function, we've got the um, surfer, so we're setting up surfer, surfer on port 8000. Um, we're console logging the server name and then we're doing for await so async is baked in as well so we're saying for await const rec um, of s so we're getting the request surfer request from s which is our surfer up here and then we're using rec.respond body hello world now if you've used node.js before you might be a bit familiar with a couple of these sort of things or kind of what's going on so let's run this one and see what happens so we're going to run app and we get this error that was expected. Basically, we need to use, because it's secure, we need to actually allow it to be able to use other things. So if we now go here and we just add in that flag, it tells us to add to so allow net, which allows the network, um, hit enter, we can now go over here and you can see we've got hello world. Now this works the exact same way for TypeScript. So if we go TypeScript and we stop this and we just rerun it but change this to TypeScript, you'll see it compiles it first because obviously TypeScript needs to be compiled into JavaScript. And then we can just go over here, refresh page, and it works the exact same. Let's change this to have an exclamation mark on the end just so we can see the difference. I need to rerun the surfer. So it will compile. Once we see this console log, that means it's ready. And there you go. We've got the extra exclamation mark on the end. And that is basically the basics of 
uh, Dino. Um, we're going to go a bit further and we're going to look at um, Oak, which is basically if you ever use Koa or Express or something similar, it's like how you create a RESTful sort of API in um, Dino. So first thing we need to do is we need to import something. Um, so we need to import we need to import the application. We need to import router and we need to, well, they're the main two we need to port and it's from, I'm gonna copy and paste this in because I don't know it off by heart. There we go. And if we go back over here and we just search for Oak Dino, just so it knows which what we're, what we're referring to. So a middleware framework for Dino. You can see here if we scroll down, tells you about it. actually this is the default stuff here for it so let's actually just copy and paste that in so we'll just get an application for this version of it so we've got application which we create a new app so like creating a new express app or a new uh, cocoa app we've got the ctx um, we can pass through here this is typescript here tell, giving me the error because we're not setting this explicit to a type so we're going to set its type to any and then here you see ctx.response.body is hello world we're going to say hello tyler Hit save. We're going to be listening on port 8000. So let's rerun this. And you'll see we get in a sec. Oh, we didn't console log anything. So this should be working now. There you go. Hello, Tyler. Which, and again, this will work exactly the same way in JavaScript as it does in TypeScript. Obviously, for fan using TypeScript syntax or JavaScript syntax. Um, so let's stop the server quickly. So that's cool. That's something simple. But what happens if we want to have some different routes? So I'm going to import a router. And what we could do with the router is we can say const router is equal to a new router. I keep, uh, I'll just do it anyway. Um, and then we can say router and we can pass through some routes. I'm just going to use the simple get slash, um, which will be our home. And then we can use a controller here. So we could actually create a new, we can import it, but we're just going to do the default off, go here, say await or async ctx, which stands for context, we'll go like this, and then we'll say, we actually need to import something else, we need something called, well, actually, we don't right now, so if we go over to the oak stuff here, you'll see if we find the router example, do, 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 do. here it is the router so the router um, you can see the router example here we can get this then we can get past the context through and then we call this to pass something back so it is just ctx dot response dot body is equal to and we can just give anything we could just say home hit save um, start do you know Oh, actually, we're not going to get anything because we need to actually tell it to use this. So we're going to say app.use uh, router.routes. And we also need to tell it to use the router.allowed routes, I think. It actually might be here. Allowed methods. That's where I went wrong. And then we can just run it as normal files and we didn't have a console log so we're not going to know i'm also going to set this to any run it i'm actually going to put a console log here so we know when it's ready ready and now let's rerun it we'll wait for the ready so it says ready we'll raise steady go there we go head over it refresh home which is awesome so that's cool again we can set multiple routes but one thing we kind of want to do and we don't just want to be returning back text, right? You might want to return other things. Obviously, this is cool for if you want to do an API, but once you want to return an actual page, um, we can use something called send. Um, and what send does allow us to send a file. So let's create a new file. Let's call it index.html. We're actually going to sell it in a fuse directory. And we're just going to boilerplate it, say home, and just say welcome home. And now we can say in here, we could say await, send, and we can put in here um, ctx, 
and then we can say ctx dot oh how do you do it again ctx dot cont so dot request dot url dot path name and then we need to pass through this object which can have the root so this is the root file of where our um our views are kept so we're going to put in here and we're going to do something called we're going to use dino's info so we're using a dino namespace we're going to say dino dot cwd which is a function which is basically says here returns a string representing the current working directory so it gets the current directory then we'll say they're in the views folder and then we say the index file is called index.html hit save and now we should be able to rerun this. It says ready, and if we run internal server error. Now, the reason for that is because we're missing enough directory. So you know how we use allow net? There's enough one we need to allow. For now, I'm just going to use A, which stands for all, which allows them all. So if we now hit run, it says ready. We rerun. Welcome home. There you go. So that's how you do a simple few. Um, and instantiate it. So that's just the basics of Dino. We're going to be going over this a lot more detail in the future. Um, it's just come out um, literally last night, so there's not much I know yet, but I'm going to be learning it, for, well, quite a lot because it's apparently going to be the Node.js replacement, which that means employers are going to be looking for five years' experience in a year's time. But anyway. Um, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget that thumbs up button. If you want to see more, then don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and peace out. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. And love is all we'll ever trust.